Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today we're going to look at responsive layouts in Power Apps and it's a, it's a very hot topic at the moment. It's something that we've been looking forward to and again it just takes that overall maturity level of Power Apps to the next level and uh, basically what it's all about is it now allows you to create a Power App that'll resize according to the device that you're accessing it on. And by resizing, it's not only zooming in or out and making it bigger and smaller, it's actually allowing you to get a handle on the actual screen size and then to display certain elements or certain controls in certain ways depending on how you choose to, on which device you're accessing it from. So very exciting. If you haven't seen this blog yet, I'll include this in uh, or below this video. It's very informative. I had a, one or two issues that I had to get my head around initially um, and that's why I'm doing this video to just make it easier for everybody so you don't have to go through those same pains. But essentially I'm also going to then make this Power App available for you to just download and you can play with it as well. So let's jump into it. First things first, let's go and create a brand new Power App. And for this we're going to be using a phone layout. And uh, for the, the kind of app, depending on the kind of app that you, you're going to be building, it might be easier to start with a phone layout and then build it out for tablet and web instead of trying to do it the other way around. We have to try and, you know, get these things small again. So for phone layout, um, let's go and pick that. Nice clean power app. Just there's something special about a clean power app like this. I love it. But now we can go into file, app settings, screen size and orientation we can keep these the default for the phone so 640 by 1136 that's fine what we do want to do is we want to tell it we don't want it to scale we don't want it to zoom which is essentially what the scale does uh, because if it zooms then it doesn't automatically change the the size of the real estate that you have to work with so we want to turn that off and then we also, if you're going to do this, let's do this properly and turn off lock orientation. So it means that if it's accessed on a mobile device, uh, it's not really applicable on a web or because if you can't turn your, your screen around on a PC and if you do, it's not going to know you did it. So you're just going to look stupid. So basically on a mobile device, if you turn it on its side, you can change it to a horizontal view. So we don't want to change, we don't want to lock the orientation. We want to allow the user to do that. Right, so we've done that, it's going to apply that. And while we're busy, just go and give it a name. So my new app for any device and let's go and save it. Now that it's saved, we can jump back into the app. And then if we go into the screen, which is the only thing there is to go into really. Uh, you'll see that there's a under height. It's now populated with the following formula. And what max does, it'll take the biggest value out of the parameters that you pass to it. So in this case, we're passing the app.height and the app.design height to it. And max is going to return the biggest of these two. Now the difference between height and design height is height is the actual height that the of the screen that the Power App's being accessed on, while design height is the height that was specified in the app design. So because we've got a phone layout, the design height according to the settings, just go back into it, will be 1136. So there's 1136 is the height, and that's the design height. So at runtime, that's going to return that. So what this formula basically does is just saying that never go below the maximum of these two. So if the, the, the width of the, uh, the, sorry, if the height of the app is bigger than what it was designed for, then use that biggest um, value. But if it gets smaller than what the design height is, don't go smaller than that. So the design height is the minimum height for this. So in, I'm sure one of these days we're gonna be able to access Power Apps on our Apple Watches and uh, at that stage you want to say that if it's run on a watch as an example don't scale to that level because the app wasn't designed for it the design height is the minimum height for the app right this works very well 
The only thing we need to add to this is because we want this app to be able to change orientation, we just want to manipulate the second parameter for this max formula. So that we want to say if the app dot width is greater than the app dot height, then we want to use the app dot design width for the height. Otherwise, we want to use the app dot design height for the height as the second portion of this this formula. So in this case, it, what this will do is if you change it on its side, it'll use the width as the height and the width and the height as the width. Okay, so it's going to do the same thing for the width. But in this case, we're just going to again f say that if the app dot width, sorry, it's not going to work. If the app dot width is greater than the app dot height, the actual width and height of that it's being run on, then we want to use the app dot design height for the width. Um, or else we want to use the app dot design width for the width, which is the default. And that's it. So this app is ready to go. Um, well, to respond at least. The only thing to keep in mind is if I click on play, you know, you'll see that it doesn't ch change size. And uh, that's because it, that only works at runtime. So let's go and have a look at what it looks like in runtime. But just before we do, let's just add something that'll make it a little bit easier to see the screen or the, the actual size of the app in runtime. So let's go and add a an icon and let's go and use a rectangle. Let's just put it in the corner and then tell it that the width should be the parent dot width. And in this case, it's just going to connect to the parent in, and this is the, the screen according to this tree view. You can see the rectangle is a child of the, the screen. And uh, so I can connect to the parent property, which we've done that work on earlier to tell it that this is that formula. So whatever the value of this property is at runtime, the rectangle would now just assume that and it'll fill the width of the screen. And then the same for the height. We want to go and tell it that just use the parent dot height. And there we go. Just to make it easier to see, we might want to just go and change the border color to something that'll stand out against the blue. Let's just make that white. And then also the thickness, let's make it a fat five. And because we're also going to access it on a mobile device and change the orientation between vertical and horizontal or portrait and landscape, just also just give it a label so we can see where the top of the screen is. So this side up. We're not going to worry about centering that. We'll get to that later. But uh, because we have to run this, we need to go and save and publish this. So we can't just preview this. Publish it. And there it is in the live environment. So let's go and see what this looks like in a browser. And here is the moment of truth. We're going to launch this and let's see what it does. Uh, we're hoping for a blue. Yep, we've got a blue screen. Blue screens are typically not good in Microsoft terms, but in this case, it's fantastic. Happy to see this. But I'm even happier to see the white border around the screen. And if I go and resize this app, you'll see that the border follows the screen perimeter, which is exactly what we're looking for. And the same for the height. If I resize that, it'll just come with. So that's working exactly as we want. And uh, let's go and see what this looks like on a phone and then what it looks like to change orientation. So here we are on my phone and just give it a quick refresh to make sure I'm getting the latest info and how let's launch that power app. So it's a blue screen. It's got a white border that fills the screen. That's beautiful. And at the top, we've got the this side is up label, which means the right side is up. Now on a, a phone, you can't change the size like you could on a browser, but let's change the orientation and turn this phone on its side. One, two, three, there we go. And it's on its side with the right side up. And you can see the white border is filling the screen nicely. So this is working very, very well. So thank you for watching this video. This was a very basic introduction to responsive apps. We'll be doing more videos to show you more in depth how to use this in more live apps and more use cases. 
But for now, thank you for watching and uh, please join us for the next video. Don't forget to subscribe and see you soon.